Welcome to In Focus. I'm Brian Jackson. My guests are from the Urbana Free Library and Phillips Adult Services, Laura Fegley from Children's Services, and Amber Castens, the Teen Librarian. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. Okay. And tell us a little bit about Adult Services. Well, Adult Services at the library um, actually means sixth grade and older for the most <laughs> part, though I'll let Amber talk more about the teen programs. Um, it just refers to everything in the library other than children's services, actually. So adult services are all the materials we have for people to check out, books, DVDs, CDs, board games, all the different things like databases and so on. But we also have still a reference service, public service desk where you can come and ask questions, get help with anything that might occur to you. And then of course the big thing of since the past decade is we have a substantial computer lab that we offer free internet access to the public. What new programs are coming to adult services, uh, Anne? Well, we have just, in the past couple of years, been expanding our programming. It was something that we didn't do much of for adults in the past. And so some of this are things that are continuing. Our, we have a regular book club. Um, there's a music program once a month. Uh, we are collaborating with some people at the University of Illinois with some film series. But the big program coming is a community-wide read that we're going to do with Champaign Public Library the whole month of October, where we hope everyone will join us in reading The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And there will be programs throughout the month covering every possible aspect that you could think of to do with that work. So it'll be combined with Urbana and Chan at yes, both libraries? Yes, we'll be doing um, different programs at, at both places. And um, yeah, as I say, there'll be stuff for children, teens, and adults. We'll address the controversial side of reading Mark Twain mm -hmm. and also the fun. So. OK. Um, Amber, what about your role as a teen librarian? What, are, what, what, is, what is that? mainly. Is this for like younger people or? Okay. Well, like Ann said, adult services encompasses beginning at sixth grade on up. And so the teen services covers sixth grade through twelfth grade. So we have a teen summer reading program that I, runs parallel with the children's summer reading program. Uh, the theme was reading is so delicious for this past year. And then we try to have monthly programs also for the teens. So we have a really thriving manga club. They meet once a month. It's always the first Fridays. We also are starting to get two other programs launched. We have a video game day that meets once a month, and it's almost like an arcade for the teens at the library. It's the second Saturdays from 2 to 4.30, where we have the kids come and they play anything from Wii's to PlayStation 2's. Um, all the different video platforms and they have a good time and there's always pizza so <laughs> that really draws the kids to come and then we're also having an art day program it's a series we started it I guess last January for the spring semester we are partnering with the U of I art education departments and so their art students are coming in and teaching the kids new techniques but then during the fall semester, I'm finding programs for us to do. So it's always the fourth Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. This month for August, we're going to do bubble painting out in Cherry Alley. Mm -hmm. So we'll be adding uh, food coloring to the bubble solution, you know, making bubble collages. Should be a fun time. I understand chess is also involved. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Chess is more of a thing in the children's department, honestly. But like Anne had said earlier, we are trying to expand our board game collection. So we're getting games that interest the teens, uh, full-size families, and then also the older age groups. Um, Laura, what about the uh, ch children's? Tell us a little bit about the children's service program. OK. We work with everything from babies to, well, age groups from babies up until fifth grade, and some sixth graders too, if they still feel comfortable coming down in the children's department, and their caregivers. So parents, grandparents, teachers, 
and uh, nannies, etc. They all come down into the children's department. We have programs. In fact, last year I counted up. We did 341 programs, so <laughs> almost one wow. one a day. So we have programs for babies, uh, toddlers, preschoolers, and then um, kindergarten on up through fifth or sixth grade and then the materials that go along with them. So we have books, we have CDs, books on disc, movies. Uh, we have databases also that are geared toward children and we have a lot of, um, a lot of materials for teachers. And so we just try and keep, keep those kids entertained down in the children's department <laughs> as best we can. We also have a lot of toys and mm -hmm. games that the kids can come in and play mm -hmm. when, when they're down in our department. So, and computers, and we also have computers for parents. So when they come down with their with their children, they can. Any use ever the new computer. programs coming in your to your department? Well, we're just finishing up at the end of August our Reading is a Picnic summer reading program. Mm -hmm. It's been very popular, and we do programs all year long. So we will be doing a program having to do with Mark Twain, mm -hmm. and um, our fall programming will have will. Um, be previewing some books. We'll be having some art programs. We always have multicultural story times on the weekends. We have art programs on the weekends and the chess club that you were talking about mm -hmm. is every Saturday at 4.30 uh, in our department. We will have a, uh, our, all of our holiday programs coming up, Halloween, Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and Christmas. And then um, in the spring, we're already gearing up for our fairy tale ball for next year. Yes. For Halloween, we're actually going to be partnering both children's and teen services departments, so that way uh, younger kids can come and have their makeup done before they go trick-or-treating. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to that program being on the actual Halloween day before trick-or-treating starts. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, once a year I think you have a, or maybe more than once a year, I think you have a book sale. Tell us a little, somebody tell us a little bit about the book sale they have at the library is it about once a year? Well we actually are now up to having it three times a year mm -hmm. um, primarily because the number of books that are donated to the library for this is so huge that we run out of space <laughs> so that's why at first we went to two and now actually three times a year the books are either items that have been discarded from our collection, which there are not so many of those, or donated by the public. Uh, we do vet the books that come in from the public and sometimes add things to the collection rather than put it into the book sale, mm -hmm. but most of them go to the sale. And this is um, an enormously important um, financial contribution to the library. The Friends of the Library, which is just a group that works to help the library, run the book sale and then all of the proceeds from it are given to the library to spend on uh, either materials or programs. And it's because of the book sale that we can have the summer reading programs mm -hmm. and, and do these other things like that. What months of the year are they held in? Oh, wow. Um, we have a fall sale, we a have one spring coming up. sale, and then we always have one in conjunction with Sweet Corn Festival. So we'll be mm -hmm. having one coming up in just One's a few weeks. One's coming up in a couple weeks, yeah. How long, how many days do they last? Well, they start with the evening for Friends of the Library only. So if you're a member of the Friends, which involves paying um, some nominal dues, you get to go in first. Then there's two days where it's just an uh, open sale for anyone, and uh, the prices are as marked. Then there's a half-price day, <laughs> and then the last day it's free, free. whatever you can carry. <laughs> so and that's people do carry out people do carry whatever's yes. left. You know that you didn't think that 1914 <laughs> book on accounting was an, of interest, but somebody will take it. <laughs> all of them are the events are at the library, right? Yes, it's all in our auditorium mm -hmm. on the ground floor at the library. Uh, um, I was gonna 
uh, so it's like four, three, four days long yeah. each time. Mm -hmm. okay. It's always, I guess, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday mm -hmm. uh, routine here. Okay. Um, does there any cost to go for these book uh, to go to the library? Is there any cost involved to go to the library or for their programs? Is there any cost to be in their programs for any department? Is there any? There is, there is no, no cost, there's no cost to the patrons for our programs. Mm -hmm. Everything is free, and that's what's so free. wonderful about the public library, mm -hmm. yeah. is it's free for everybody to come in and um, take advantage of the services that we mm -hmm. offer. Mm -hmm. And it kind of levels the playing field for the um, community, because everybody can come. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, tell us, somebody wanna, I, anybody can answer this. Tell us a little bit about the archives in the Urban Free Library. To do that? Yes. Well, the archives, um, it's actually a real treasure that everyone should be aware of. Um, what they have there are all the old documents pertaining to Champaign County and also um, Illinois and um, they have things from Illinois and the rest of the country. So what would you do with this? Well, it's a wonderful place for genealogy. Mm -hmm. They can help you trace your um, ancestors with all the materials they have, especially if you grew up in this area. And people fly in to use this particular mm -hmm. archives because of the extent of their records. It's also a place though that you can go back and and find old newspaper articles, everything to do with Urbana, municipal records, all of the governmental records, just everything you could think of and more. It's kind of astonishing all the things yeah. that they're able to offer um, people who are doing research. and. One of my favorites is that they can help you research your home. If you're living in an older home, they have lots of um, information on the original plan for the house and changes that were made over the years and so on. It's a, it's a real treasure trove of stuff. I understand uh, Rob McCandless has some old photographs that have been donated by him to the uh, archives. Yes, he donated his, his entire archives, I believe, of all his um, photography, which was uh, decades of local photographs, and they're, uh, I think, still in the process of making that digital Catalog. so that it'll be accessible to everyone. Yeah, especially to the ones who he's pictures. Who yes. Shot a yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe right. you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely am. <laughs> Definitely. About forty-eight years ago. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Anything else? Does anybody want to add about their about their programs? Um, I did forget to mention that for the first time, we're going to be having zombie prom in October for the teens. We're very excited. It's going to be just like regular prom with, um, you know, snacks, refreshments, a DJ, you know, so lots of music and dancing. Only everything is going to be zombified. So uh, we'll have people help them with their makeup. As long as the teens show up in clothes that can get dirty or like zombie attire, then <laughs> we'll help them with the makeup. <laughs> Should be popular. Yeah, zombies are the, the end thing. Like October, days. it's on our calendar. I want to thank my guests today, Ann Phillips from Adult Services. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Brian. And Amber Castens from the, the Teen Library. Thank you, sir. And thank you. And Laura Fegley from Children's Services. Thank you for having us. Thanks. All righty. I'm Brian Jackson. Thank you very much for joining us for In Focus. <laughs>